Hey everybody, I'm Justin with AmericanMuscle.com and welcome to this installment of Customer Builds, a series where we chat with different customers from our build pages here on the site about their ride and all of its modifications, and hey, maybe give you some ideas for that Mustang at home. Today, I'm pumped to be talking to a young man from California named Darnell about his 2012 Kona Blue GT that is just a really well-rounded build, a lot of purposeful mods on there, and uh, it's done very well as you guys will see here in a minute. Now, if you want a complete breakdown of all of Darnell's modifications, feel free to check out his build page, of course, back on the site at AmericanMuscle.com, or if you happen to be catching this on YouTube, just go ahead and click on that link below. For now, let's catch up with Darnell. What's going on, man? How you doing? Oh, man, you know, just chilling. I'm even talking to you. <laughs> Listen, I'm I'm glad we get to do these videos because I get to reach out to uh, you know customers and Mustang fans and get to talk to them. Darnell, your 2012 jumped out at me, man. I love the Kona Blue, and uh, I love the mods that you did with it, man. Because I'm I'm a kind of a less is more guy, and I feel like that's the direction you're going with it. Um, right. So let's talk about the car. Let's start up front because some of my favorite mods are up there. So let's start off with that boss front fascia. Uh, you know, I, I just got the, uh, I really like that myself. So that's why I had got it. It's pretty cool. And especially the little extra attachments you could put on it, like the brake ducking system or the fog lights, whichever one you choose. Yeah, you end up doing the uh, the brake ducts, which I don't think a lot of people do unless you're like really in the track in the car and doing all that. But uh, you take that thing out on the track once in a while? Uh, I'm really just on the street with it, but hey, the upgrades, they work. The, the <laughs> brake ducting system, it definitely works. You know, the, yeah, the brakes for sure stay way cooler. How was that getting installed? You taking the front bumper off and everything, was it hard? Nah, uh, it's not too hard. Basically, you gotta take the front bumper off. I had to trim the inside fender well just a little bit. It was pretty straightforward. Okay. So, nice. Did you knock out the grill at the same time with the uh, Raxium LED fog lights? I got okay. the grill in the way at the same time. Had to get that combination right there. I love those lights. Yeah, talk to me about those things, man, because they're not like your traditional fog light with just one little bulb in there. You got a bunch of LEDs. Uh, I can imagine those things are pretty bright. Super bright, and nice and clear, nice color. Tinted just a little bit, not too much. I get a lot of compliments on those lights right there, you know. Just a lot of people, you know, they want to know what kind it is and where I got them from, you know. Well, and dude, and that's why we're doing these videos, man, because a lot of people like to, like they might see your car and be like, damn, what fog lights, what grill is that? Uh, you know, link people to your parts and give people better ideas for what they can do with their own car, so. Yeah, so uh, I had to get it myself because I had never seen nobody else with it. <laughs> I like it, man, that's awesome. Now, you did the Eleanor grill and uh, you did the MMD pre-painted vents. How'd that go? Hesitant at first, but once I got started, I measured everything up where I wanted them placed. It, it came out pretty, pretty good. It's pretty simple once you get going. Yeah, right. We give you the template and everything. You know, you just make sure you measure twice, cut once. That old saying, and and don't don't mess it up. Right. Cut straight. <laughs> I know where you're going. Exactly. <laughs> I hear you, man. Well, it looks like you did a great job because even under the hood, I noticed you cut like the the hood liner out for it and everything. So they're they're functional. Yeah, they're they're definitely functional. Heat blows up out of there. You could just feel it just coming out of there. They're definitely functional. The color was just like factory on point, and they work great. That's awesome, man. Well, I noticed that too because you also got the speed form, the pre-painted classic window louvers. So. That the paint match pretty solid on that too? Yeah, those two definitely solid match. Nice, man. Now, did you end up switching out the rear spoiler? Is that the GT500 rear spoiler you got on there? Yeah, it's a GT500 uh, rear spoiler, GT500 rear valance. Yeah, and that's where you ended up throwing the Flowmaster Outlaws too with the X-Pipe. I'm sure that thing's loud as hell, huh? Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty aggressive, man. I'm loving those too. One of my favorite things I think about the car is that um, it, even though it's a stock part, but a lot of guys like the 11 to 12 owners like yourself end up switching out to those 13 and 14 tail lights. And so you ended up grabbing the Raxium kit to make that all happen and it looks killer. You gotta have that Raxium kit to make that all work. And it, it looks good. I mean, I know finding those tail lights in good shape is not always easy and they're expensive, but the finished product speaks for itself. Yeah, I love those. Like the cherry on top back there, it looks like you got the MMD, the matte black trunks around to kind of like just, you know, complete the package. You gotta have that too, man. I, I had to get all, I was basically trying to get rid of all the little chrome. So you got a lot of suspension going on too. I know you and I talked about it before. You had the SR uh, Performance Lowering Springs and those are riding on the Coney Yellows, the adjustables. 
Yeah, Coney Yellows all the way around. The ride is great. And I will end up going with the JM Extreme. Yeah, the lower control arms. Looks like you also got the JM Panhard rod and some BMR stuff back there as well. I can imagine it's pretty planted in the back. You also went like, again, Max Motorsports bump steer kit. I mean, your purposeful mods, man, just trying to get that alignment and the suspension on point, huh? Yeah, I got the alignment on point. I got the. Uh... Did the Eibach Pro alignment camber adjustment bolts? Yeah, that right there. You snatched it right up, right? <laughs> I got, dude. Listen, I'm, I'm ready, man. I got your list right in front of me here. <laughs> I'm prepared. I bet the thing hands, the handles pretty good. What tires you got on those wheels? I got some, uh, the Neato G2s. Nice. So I just been trying to mess around with my suspension stuff first to get all the suspension right before I really get into the engine. I'll just, I just, this is the way I wanted to go to get the suspension done first and then pretty much more engine. You gotta set the foundation, man. I get it, you know, do the suspension. You also did the brakes, which a lot of people don't do. A lot of people dive into the performance first, make their car fast and then don't stop. But you did the brakes too at the Power Stop kit, right? The Power Stop Extremes. Uh, the cross drilled and slotted rotors and you did the Z26 pads, it looks like. And the brake pads, they work super great no brake dust because before i was getting a lot of brake dust i just go around one block and it's just dusted out just looking all but now it's they 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 stay clean the only nice. dust they really get on there is from the road <laughs> yeah you don't want to dust up them wheels because as i've had some black wheels in my day and, and you think black would stay clean but they, i feel like they showed dirt more than like a silver wheel for you know sure I mean? just like a black car like and so that's a dark car too i'm sure like keeping that thing clean is probably not that easy <laughs> no, it's not. We talked suspension, we talked about the brakes. The engine, you don't have a lot going on right now. It looks like you have the air raid, uh, the, the, the tube to work with the stock air box. And uh, any any other future modifications coming for power? Yes, I'm actually, I'm trying to save up my money right now. I'm trying to get a supercharger. So I was either thinking about trying to go with the Roush phase one or I was the uh, Elder Block phase one. Those are the only two I really think that was 50 state legal for California. So I was oh. looking at one of those two soon. All right, I like that, man. Now, listen, as a Roush supercharger owner on my 14, I definitely recommend that. The nice thing is with the phase one, you can upgrade it down the road if you wanna go phase two or phase three and uh, car's gonna rip. That's awesome. So yeah, I just, you know, I ain't trying to do too much right now. It's a little something. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like your mods have been very like purposeful. You know, that Shelby, the dual ISO reservoir kit, I'd same thing I put on my car because I was having clutch issues with the clutch pedal sticking on the floor sometime. And that cured it right up. How about for you? Yeah, I got that, uh, the reservoir and the uh, Steeda clutch spring. Those two alone made a big difference in that sticking to the floor problem at hard, high RPMs. Yeah, and I love I love the handle too. By the way, the the um, the Coyote handle. That that's it right there. <laughs> you don't see the pistol grip a lot, man. Usually it's like a ball shifter or something like that, but you don't see the pistol a lot. Yeah, I try to get rid of that ball. Tried that the pistol um, out and. It took me probably like maybe a day or two to really get the feel for it. But once I got the feel for it, I love it. I damn near won't never go back. You could just rip it so much better, you know? I might have to try that out then. And it's a super clean car. I, I love the Kona. You don't see them a lot in Kona. I feel like that's kind of a, a, a little harder to find color, especially in that year. But it's uh, it's real sharp, especially with the, the the factory HIDs. I end up going all the way out of my way just to get that, that car to Vegas. <laughs> oh, really? Yes, yeah, so I drove out to Vegas to get that car. Darnell, I always like to ask guys, last question. It's kind of a corny one for some people, but hey, you never know. Do you have a, uh, a name for your car? Yeah, I actually do have a name for my car called uh, Blue Blur. I like it. Blue Blur. <laughs> well, it's going to be even more of a blur once that blower gets on there. I can't wait for that. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, dude, Darnell, thank you so much for joining me today, man. Super clean car. Keep modding. Oh, for sure, for sure. Appreciate the call, man, and Absolutely. everything else. Hey, dude, it's my pleasure, as always. All right, well, there you go, guys. That was Darnell. Super clean 2012 Kona Blue GT, just built with a purpose. He did it right, didn't dive into a bunch of horsepower and leave everything else stock. He took care of the suspension, he took care of the brakes. Obviously, the appearance is looking killer with the Boss front end, the GT500 rear valance. Just a really well-rounded car, so Darnell, well done, man. Keep it going, I know you're a big Mustang guy, but uh, yeah, get that blower on there and have some fun. Guys, we hope you enjoyed this installment of Customer Builds. And if you wanna see a complete breakdown of Darnell's mods, feel free to check out his build page back on the site, of course, or if you're catching this on YouTube, just go ahead and click on the link in the description. For now, I'm Justin, thanks for watching. 
for all things Mustang. Keep it right here at AmericanMuscle.com.